Stand by to launch FanStream Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to FanStream Sports. Nothing, nothing but pure sports. All right, this is the Ohio State Buckeyes Daily Blitz. Thank you for tuning in. We're on FanStream Sports, as you know, powered by DSP Media. I'm Jeff Fittoff. Tito, they call me. You can follow me on Twitter, at FitHappens. Uh, listen, like, subscribe, all those things. Uh, for this podcast and all the ones on Fan Stream Sports. We've got a lot of great content. About 136 days away right now from the Ohio State opener against Indiana on the road in Bloomington and football. And um, ESPN put out their their FPI, their Football Power Index rankings. And um, they do it based on a lot of things. They project win totals. They simulate the season, you know, like 20,000 times or something like that. And then they assign points to everybody, every team, based on the different rankings and Ohio State sits atop right now uh, with a 31.5 FPI is what that is. Alabama's second at 28.2, so that's a decent gap between the two. Georgia's third at 27.4, followed by LSU, and then Texas. Michigan checks in at sixth, and they do all these things with projected win totals. Um, uh, You know, their percentage chance they have of winning out as of right now. Their um, chances of winning their division, winning their conference, making the playoffs, and so on. And right now, they've got Ohio State average on all the times it's simulated 11.8. So, damn near 12 wins. That includes a Big Ten championship game. But um, they've got them with a 34.3% chance of winning out. Uh, They've got them a 75.5% chance to win their division, which is second most among every um, major college team. That Georgia's uh, got an 89.5% to win the SEC uh, on their side of the SEC. They gave Ohio State the best chance uh, to win the conference, 71.2. 82.2% chance to make the playoffs. Uh, 57.2% chance to make the national championship. And a 36.7% chance to win the national championship. So the playoff percentage, making the championship, winning the championship are all the highest odds, best or best percentages among every team according to this football power index. Um, so they give Michigan a... Um, they give Michigan, by the way, a 14.3% chance to win the conference. And like I say, they're sixth in this whole thing. Um, follow Michigan, USC, Clemson, Notre Dame, Penn State's in there. And then uh, Oklahoma's after that one for the, out of the Big 12. So um, three SEC teams in the top four, Alabama, Georgia, LSU. So uh, those are great numbers for Ohio State. The fact that they uh, you know, have, at least for the ESPN right now in the football power index, they give Ohio State the best chances and all those things. And uh, right now, according to the schedule, there's three teams in the top 10 uh, they're going to play as of right now, and that'd be Penn State, Michigan, and Notre Dame. So uh, switching over to the West now, the Western side of things in the Big Ten, Wisconsin's got the best odds to win the West at 47.9%. Second in the West is Iowa at 20.1%. Wisconsin catches a break this year because – they are hosting Ohio State in Pickle's first year, and they've got a lot of turnover, I know. Tanner Mordecai's in from SMU. But um, Wisconsin gets to host Ohio State at Camp Randall. They don't play Michigan or Penn State. So that's a big advantage for them. Uh, Iowa, the team that's got the second-best odds according to percentage, according to FPI, has to play at Madison. So Wisconsin's in a great spot to, uh, to make some kind of run here and win the Big Ten East. Um, I'm sorry, Big Ten West, Big Ten West, and, and possibly get the uh, the Big Ten championship game and take on what presumably could be Ohio State, you would hope. But Wisconsin, though, in good shape as far as the schedule goes this year. It sets up nicely for them. Iowa, meanwhile, has to play at Wisconsin, like I mentioned. They also play at Penn State and uh, at Nebraska, which Nebraska, you have to believe, will be improved this year with Matt Rule there and some of the changes they have made. Other news out of the Big Ten. Maryland is finally dumping those ugly-ass helmets they have. They had that weird state flag on their helmet and a plaster all over the field. It was just, it was an ugly, like, the checkerboard look. They're going to more of a traditional helmet now this year. It's going to say Terps. Um, it'll be script Terps on the side of the helmet, which I think is a huge uh, plus for them, at least as far as watching them, watching Maryland when they played. It's really hard to watch with those ugly, ugly helmets. So it is getting better now coming up in the upcoming season. Uh, it also minor changes the uniform, but it should be a better-looking Maryland uniform out there on the field. By the way, spring game. I want to do one more thing about the spring game. You know, Archie Griffin, the Buckeyes, let him have a 25-yard run, uh, score a touchdown in the game. 68-year-old man out there running around. 
Uh, it was pretty impressive. After the you know, after he did it, he did the Heisman pose, which is kind of funny. You know, only got to win it twice. Neat. Uh, and somebody took offense to it. Desmond Howard. Desmond Howard, who famously or infamously did the pose uh, in the end zone after scoring on the pump return against Ohio State uh, the year he won the Heisman Trophy, said that this is what Desmond said on Twitter. Camera guy gave Arch the ball and said, do that thing the Michigan player did. I can't think of a player associated with Michigan football that I hate more than Desmond Howard. I mean, I I think he's got to be the most hated Michigan player ever. Now, I did a list of the five people from Michigan football in the Michigan football program that, that I think are the most hated as far as I am concerned. And Desmond Howard, clearly, he should be he should probably be one through four, but I'll put him at number one right now. Number two, I'm going to go with Charles Woodson. Ohio kid goes there. I, I can't get the picture on my mind, him with those, the rose in his mouth after beating Ohio State. That pissed me off seeing that. Woodson uh, is probably number two on my list. Number three, I'm going to go with Lloyd Carr, the former coach, just because he always looked like a crotchety old man and seemed to complain about way too much during the games and just always looked pissed off. Number four for me is Tim Bianca Batuka. If for no other reason, the fact that he uh, dismantled Ohio State that one year, came out of nowhere and rushed for like 313 yards, I think, in a victory of Ohio State during one of those very, very, very painful losses to Michigan during the John Cooper era. Number five, Drew Henson, just because he was a cocky asshole and wasn't that good. And he always had that kind of half smile on his face. Um, but Drew Henson's the other one. Those, that's my top five. Uh, I don't know what your top five are. If you want to tweet with me, you can. Again, at that happens where you can find me. Would love to hear that. Switching over to basketball uh, in the Big Ten. Zach Eady, the National Player of the Year for Purdue, um, announced he is going to explore the NBA draft, not give up his eligibility left. He still could come back. He's seven feet, four inches tall. He's got an old school game to him by the fact. What I mean by that is he, he's a slow center. You know, so that's what he is. He's seven foot four. Um, he averaged uh, 22.3 points, uh, just under 13 rebounds, and just over two blocks a game for Purdue this year. Obviously disappointed losing in the first round as a as a one to a 16 to fairly Dickinson. But I, I don't think he has much of an NBA career. There's not a spot anymore for a guy that big who can't shoot or defend a shooter. Because look at the way – the bigs are now in the the, the seven footers, the six eleven, seven footer, seven one. The guys like what Durant can do, um, you know what um, uh, what Joel Embiid can do. These guys can bring you out for jump shots and all that. I don't know who Zach Eady would guard. He could probably have a role in the NBA, a very limited role, uh, you know, a, a, a deep bench player. But I don't think he's going to get drafted in the first round. I think he'll come back to Purdue for another year, which. Would probably be smart to work on things, but I just don't see him having a big role in the NBA. And so I do expect him to come back to Purdue for another year. A uh, recent mock draft on CBS Sports by Kyle Boom did an NBA mock draft of uh, the first round. And he had six Big Ten players going in the first round. The first one was Chris Murray, the kid from Iowa. They have him going off the board at number 14 to New Orleans. Uh, Jalen hood uh, um from uh, Indiana. I'm sorry, followed by, yeah, 15 to Indiana. And then uh, his teammate, Trace Jackson Davis, number 20 to Houston. Bryce Sensabaugh, 21 to Brooklyn. Michigan's Jet Howard, 23 to Portland. And Kobe Bufkin uh, at, from, uh, at uh, 25 to Memphis. So six players in the Big Ten, but none until uh, number 14. Uh, with um, Chris Murray from Iowa. So uh, we'll see how that changes. I, I still think Sensible is going to be gone no matter what from Ohio State. As long as he's guaranteed a first-round pick, and it looks like he will be, he would be gone. NFL draft news now. And Bryce Young has become the overwhelming favorite to be the number one pick overall by the Carolina Panthers. Uh, right now, I think he's a minus 1,100 favorite, uh, which are asking, you know, it's, you've got to wager 100 bucks, or wager 1,100 to win 100 if you bet on him to be number one. And C.J. Stroud's minus 650. But there's also talk now that C.J. Stroud could slide down a little bit. The Houston Texans might want to take a defensive player. If they're in love with Bryce Young, and that's the guy they wanted, they might pass on C.J. Stroud and take uh, go defense or trade the trade out of the pick. I So C.J. Stroud might slide a little bit. But I don't see any way he does like an Aaron Rodgers-type slide. I, think, I don't think Stroud gets past Indianapolis at four. And honestly, if... Houston decides to trade out, I think it'll be somebody moving up to get C.J. Stroud. I don't think it will be because uh, someone will trade up with 
Houston uh, Houston get a defensive player. If they're going to make that kind of move, they're going to want to get, I think, a quarterback in this. And I still think C.J. Stroud, for me, he's the best option of all the, all the quarterbacks. He's certainly no worse than two. I know Anthony Richardson measured off the charts with all these different physical traits and things he did at the Combine. Um, some of the numbers he put up were like never seen before for a quarterback at the Combine. But he was way inconsistent for me. Look at his stats game by game at Florida. And you see C.J. Stroud, two years of great tape. Uh, finished the season really well against Michigan and against uh, Georgia. I know that they uh, uh, both resulted in losses, but still, C.J. Stroud, for me, for my money, is the one to go with there. Uh, the uh, Ohio State lineman, Dewan Jones, one I'm definitely looking at. Uh, Matt Renner of Pro Football Focus tweeted out that if you have a m- mobile quarterback, this is the guy you want at right tackle. He's 6'8", 374. But what, and I still think he's going to be a great pro, but he did not – do himself a lot of favors by not doing any of the workouts. He didn't weigh in at the pro day. He did weigh in at the combine. And that's when he was 6'8", 374. Then Ohio State's pro day, though, he did not weigh in and uh, didn't really do any workouts that he needed to do. So um, we'll see. I, I, he's a great athlete. There's a video out there of him dunking a basketball right now. And uh, I saw the, the, the stat that the NBA's – the heaviest player to ever dunk in an NBA game is Oliver Miller, the big O, at 375. Um, I call him the Big O like he's Oscar Robertson, but he's not. He's they, they still call him the Big O for a different reason. But um, 375 when he dunked the ball, Dewan Jones 374 is what his listed weight is. He was dunking a basketball, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, we'll close up shop here. Talk about a couple of things. Ohio State, other uh, of the minor sports, women's golf. They won the Lady Buckeye Invitational again, uh, 17th time. They've won that. They shot uh, an 854. I'm sorry. Eight, um, they were minus 10. I'm sorry. I think of that. They were minus 10 over uh, three rounds of the 54 World Tournament there. Uh, Kayla McGinty was 5 under, 2-11. That was third place for everybody. Uh, Big Ten Championship is coming up this weekend out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So Ohio State sets up really well for that one. And uh, we'll keep following on that as well. But uh, no more news. No new news on Brian Hartline. There's been no statement from Ohio State yet about what's going to happen there. Um, to recap, he's out of the hospital. He's home now after uh, having a, a wreck on a side-by-side in his on his property. And uh, he admitted he had been drinking before. That was like at 1.20 a.m. on Sunday morning when that happened. But he has been released from the hospital. Uh, doesn't look like it's any kind of serious injuries, but not sure what Ohio State's going to do, if there'll be any kind of discipline handed down to Brian Hartline. Uh, but uh, he and one of the person was injured, but nobody injured seriously and was on his property when it happened. So we'll see what happens to that. I'll keep you posted, whatever we hear on that. But uh, that's it for today's Buckeye Blitz. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll keep you posted. Look, there's more draft talk we'll have, I'm sure, and we'll get into more of that. And also keep you up to date on any uh, basketball transfer news. If Ohio State picks anybody else up or if anybody else leaves the program, we'll do all of that next on the Buckeye Blitz. Thanks so much again. Follow me on Twitter at That Happens. 